Oh, welcome to Just the Dis. My name is Brian, and we talk about Blu-rays here, and today I am talking about another haul from Hamilton Book. I might have a problem. Uh, I just keep going back. Um, I do recommend you do the same. Bookmark Hamilton Book uh, Blu-rays. If you can highlight you know, the Blu-ray search and do the lowest to high price range, and just bookmark that and come back to that, uh, you know, maybe once a month and see what they have. Um, this order I placed a little while ago, so I'm not sure if all these will be available now when you see this video, but some of them should be still, because it seems like they hang on to certain things longer than others. And, um, there's a couple in here that I'm shocked were even available for a day, let alone, um, uh, you know, weeks at a time. So anyway, let me get into this. There's a lot of stuff here. Let's talk about four timeless Westerns. This is a really cool set. And it was like less than 10 bucks, I want to say. Um, and it's got Rio Conchos, Take a Hard Ride, uh, Butch and Sundance, The Early Days, and The Last Hard Men. And I've only seen these two. I haven't. I don't think I've seen Rio Conchos, and I want to see Last of the Hard Men because Elric Kane is a fan of that one, and it's got Charlton Heston and James Coburn. Um, but look at Take a Hard Take a Hard Ride, Jim Brown, Lee Van Cleef, Fred Williamson, Jim Kelly, Barry Sullivan, uh, and Rio Conchos. I've heard um, people talk about. It. I want to say Pat Healy is a big fan of that one. Maybe um, I could be misremembering that, but. And then Butch and Sundance Early Days is fun. It's um, William Cat and uh, William Cat and um, Tom Berenger, for gosh sakes. Yes, so that's a really good one. I'm going to try and go through these relatively fast because I got a lot of them to talk about. Okay, this one couldn't I couldn't believe, <clears throat> not because I think Pray for Death is like the greatest movie of all time, but... It's an Arrow Blu-ray, and it was like five bucks. It was like four ninety-five or something. So definitely look for this one if you can, because it's just high-quality release for five dollars. I mean, <clears throat> look at all that. Uh, so yeah, so Shokasugi stars as a family man driven to exact vigilante justice ninja style. What more do you need to know? The samurai sword of vengeance falls swift and hard in this classic slice of 80s ninja action from director Gordon Hessler. Scream and scream again. Uh, he also did um, Kiss Meets Fan from the Park. I'm just saying. Um, so anyway, really nice Arrow special edition for $5. Region A. Anyway, get Pray for Death. Next up we have Two Minute Warning. One of those films in the 70s disaster cycle. This one has uh, a really great cast, including, of course, Mr. Charlton Heston and uh, Bo Bridges and Marilyn Hassett, David Jansen, Jack Klugman, Walter Pidgeon, Martin Balsam, Jenna Rollins, Brock Peters, uh, the list goes on. Um, but this one is, uh, it says, A nightmare of fear and panic unfolds in this chilling tale of a lone gunman who sets his sights on a sellout crowd at a championship football game. So yeah, the whole movie is just like them figuring out that the there's a sniper trying to get ahead of it and then dealing with it once he starts shooting. And he does start shooting and it's intense. It's intense to watch a movie like this in this day and age. Um, but I think it's a, an interesting one, especially with that cast. So this has um, a new commentary with director Larry Pierce, a new interview with him. And it has the television broadcast version in SD, which is really cool to have as well. Uh, so that is two minute warning. I got some olive films here. Rich Kids. This is a really sweet movie. I'm a huge fan of this one. This one directed by Robert Young from 1979. And it has to do with these two young kids. Um, one of them played by... Uh, Trini Alvarado, that's who I was trying to think of, uh, who is in um, Times Square, which, gosh, I really do hope we get the Blu-ray that we're maybe going to get from Kino sometime this year. I hope that actually happens. But anyway, if you like her in Times Square, she's a little more 
well, she's kind of a similar character, actually, in some ways. Um, it says, Rich Kids, a romantic and heartwarming tale of young love set in New York, stars Trini Alvarado and Jeremy Levy. Despite their upwardly mobile backgrounds, Franny and Jamie find themselves navigating the universal issues, including family, discord, divorce, and romance in the Big Apple, directed by Robert M. Young and from a screenplay by Judith Ross, with Robert Altman serving as an executive producer. Rich Kids is a showcase of 70s Manhattan that co-stars John Lithgow, uh, David Selby, Paul Dooley, Terry Kaiser, and Irene Wirth. And so you can see in the back there, uh, John Lithgow is Trini's dad. And let's see, you don't see Terry Kaiser there, but Terry Kaiser is uh, the boy's dad. And that's Bernie, of course, from Weekend at Bernie's. And so, yeah, I just have these two kids sort of falling for each other and tricking their parents and, you know, not being fooled by their parents, you know, whatever they're trying to make up. Like there's a great bit at the beginning where you see John Lithgow's character sneaking back into like Trini Alvarado's character sees him sneaking back into the apartment in the morning and pretending well, he gets, you know, dressed and brushes his teeth with the mom and everything, but it's clear that they're actually separated and he's been sleeping somewhere else and coming home to pretend to every, like everything's okay because he just doesn't want to stress her out, but she knows about it. And so there's a lot of that kind of stuff where the parents are not as smart as they think they are and the kids are smarter. And it's just a really endearing story. And I just really like it a lot. Uh, and you get a little bit of that Altman there, although there's more of a narrative drive. It's not as loose as you might expect from a narr uh, Altman type narrative. So... Um, but really good film. I like this one a lot. Rich Kids. Next up, we have The One and Only with uh, Henry Winkler. This is a Carl Reiner movie uh, about professional wrestling. And uh, it says from Carl Reiner uh, and screenwriter Steve Gordon, uh, who wrote Arthur, comes The One and Only, a tale of martial, marital bliss and off-kilter relationships told with wry wit and a bit of borscht belt humor. This bittersweet comedy stars Henry Winkler, TV's Happy Days, Kim Darby, Gene Sachs, and Hervé Villachez. Uh, from their unconventional courtship and whirlwind college romance, we follow the lives of Andy Schmidt, Winkler, and Mary Crawford, Darby. From adulthood careers and beckoning lights of Broadway, where Andy is convinced he'll make it on the stage. However, with acting jobs in short supply, the unconventional Andy will become uh, conventional when he learns that he'll be a father with Andy's dreams, but dash triumph will come not on the, bo on the boards, but in the wrestling ring, taking a page from the flamboyant wrestler, gorgeous George, Andy creates a persona, the lover that will bring him great acclaim when his outside person, well, I'm not going to go any further anyway. So yeah, he meets this girl whirlwind romance in college. They actually have a really great courtship scene where he comes in and is just very direct with her in this way that you could, you could be turned off by or you could find very romantic. Uh, he just doesn't want to mess around. He's very focused on her and he's very sort of full of himself in this certain way that's kind of charming. And then, yeah, they sort of fall for each other and he doesn't take off as an actor and he decides to do this wrestling thing and it's it gets complicated. But he's very good. I like Henry Winkler a lot as an actor and I think this is a really underrated and underseen performance and film from Carl Reiner, who's a great, comedic director and I think this movie has heart and comedy and melancholy and is really good and is from 1977 and nobody talks about it at all so check out the one and only next we have it's in the bag with Jack Benny Don Amici William Bendix Rudy Valley and this is based on the popular Russian novel, The Twelve Shares. An old tycoon decides to leave his fortune to his only living heir, Fred Flugel, Fred Allen, uh, a free flea circus impresario. But the tycoon's crooked attorney, John Carradine, and his old business partners kill the man and frame Fred for the murders. For the murder. Sorry. Fred discovers the, that part of the money and evidence clearing him is stuffed in one of the, tw one of the chairs. Uh, he ended up selling in an auction to different buyers. The rest of the film goes off any number of hilarious tangents, each tied uh, ever so tenuously to the plot. So it's him looking for the different chairs and stuff. And it's a, it's a fun screwball comedy. I, I remember watching this on DVD 
and reading about it in Guide for the Film Fanatic. And it was just a lot of fun. I mean, you've got like Jack Benny, Don Amici, uh, and Fred Allen. I mean, they're all funny. Um, and I just remember enjoying it quite a bit. I, I like Jack Benny a lot and it was just a really enjoyable screwball. So had to snag this as part of the ongoing festivities. Next we have Shanks. This is 1974. This is William Castle's last movie starring Marcel Marceau. I'm not even going to try to summarize this one. It's extremely weird, but I am a big fan of it. I think it's very interesting. And I can't say it's going to be everybody's cup of tea. It will definitely, even if you like William Castle, it's going to be weird for you because he doesn't really talk in the movie, his character and some bad stuff happens and yeah I just I don't want to talk about Shanks I'd really rather people see it but know that uh it's five bucks so if you're adventurous enough to be curious what William Castle's final weird film looks like uh pick up Shanks for sure okay some Scream Factory stuff The Spell this is uh from 1977 as well 15-year-old Lita lives in an ordinary town, attends an ordinary high school, and wants to lead an ordinary life, but Rita is far from ordinary teenager. Overweight and self-conscious, Rita, Susan Myers, is the victim of cruel teasing by many of her classmates. Only her mother, Lee Grant, uh, and her gym teacher seem to understand her, but their understanding is not enough to contain the rage that wells up within Rita, and when it does, the rage causes a supernatural power inside her to take over. Um... So this terrifying television film from 1977 also stars James Olsen and Helen Hunt uh, and was written by genre writer Brian Taggart, who did Visiting Hours, Poltergeist 3, and The Omen 4, The Awakening. Uh, So very much a Carrie kind of thing, but a little different. And I remember liking this one too when I saw it on TV or YouTube or something. And uh, so I had to pick up a Scream Factory for... This one was a little more. I want to say this was like six or seven bucks, but still, you know, it includes a new commentary by Amanda Reyes, always worthwhile, and a new interview with the screenwriter Brian Taggart as well. So, Screen Factory goodness, cheap. One more from them, The Four Skulls of Jonathan Drake. Um, This one, it says, The sins of the father rest heavily on the heads of the sons, literally, in this fun-filled fright fest that'll keep you awake and screaming through many a traumatic night. Uh, faced with an age-old family curse that beheaded their fa- forefathers, two brothers attempt to unravel the family plot, even as sinister forces attempt to put them into it. That's all I know about this one. Um, and it is from 1959. Yeah, I don't know. It's like classic comedy kind of stuff, uh, or classic horror type in the sense that you know, late 50s is still classic era for me. Um, so I was like, yeah, cheap Screen Factory. Why not? Go for that. I think this was cheaper than The Spell. Um, keeping it moving, we have Torque, which is an absolute blast of a movie. If you haven't seen it. It's directed by Joseph Kahn, who would do a great little movie called Detention, which is out of its mind and needs to be seen to be believed. I can't even begin to describe that film. Go check out Detention. But if you want something that was sort of uh, it says from the producers of The Fast and Furious and Triple X, and it's sort of a send up of those in a way, um, but not, not in the Zucker Brothers sense. It's like, it's just self aware and crazy, and it's it is the thing while still sort of making fun of the thing. It's one of those fine line kind of things, but it's really a blast. Um, it has Ice Cube, it has Adam Scott in a really great role, Jamie Presley and Jay Hernandez, and it says. Um, Biker Kerry Ford lives to ride. Now he's riding to live. The Reaper's biker gang uh, wants him for a murder that he did not commit. The leader of the Hellions wants to get his hands on his neck and on the contraband he thinks Ford ripped off. And the FBI wants to have a little chat. Nice to be wanted, right? Anyway, it's a lot of fun. I I think if you're into the Fast and Furious movies, you'd probably get a kick out of this. It has... Two cool commentaries, the cast and the creative team, both with director Joseph Kahn, who is a blast on commentaries. Uh, follow the race and train sequences from animatic rendering through the final edit and a music video. And um, 
Joseph Kahn comes from music videos. He's done a ton, including a bunch for Taylor Swift. And they're always stylish and fun, and he brings that touch to this movie. Um, but this one, I don't know. I, I feel like it's from 2004, and as much as people love Fast and the Furious, they could be enjoying Torque all this time, and they haven't been. So enjoy some Torque. All right. Kind of a no-brainer here, Sid and Nancy. This was also like five bucks. Uh, and... Um, it has for love of punk and junk love. It doesn't have the commentary that I think he did for the Criterion DVD. Unfortunately, I'm talking about Alex Cox, of course, director of the film and director of Repo Man and some other stuff. Um, but I don't know. I still wanted to have a Blu-ray version of Sid and Nancy and uh, obviously a great cult film, a very tragic story of two lovers, you know, uh, Sid Vicious and... Uh, and Nancy, uh, what is her last name? Of course, I'm not remembering now. Um, Nancy Spungen. Their love affair is one of pure devotion. Sid falls hard for groupie Nancy Spungen, who seduces him with her affection and addiction to heroin. Um, and yeah, that's all I'm going to give you for that one. But really, a movie that I think has some incredible performances in it and shot by Roger Deakins. Who knew that? I'm sure a lot of you did. I, I probably did too. I just forgot. Um, but anyway, picked up Sid and Nancy because it's a great movie. And then another rock movie, <laughs> The Runaways, with Kristen Stewart as Joan Dett and D Dakota Fanning as Sherry Curie. And I don't know. I just kind of like this one. You know, this is one of those that um, the, I, I like their music. I like the band, The Runaways. I love Joan Jett. And... Um, so I just thought, why not pick up this Blu-ray? You've got some special features here. And, you know, it's like all biopics. It's not perfect by any means, but I do like Kristen Stewart as Joan Jett. I think she works for me. Um, and Dakota, Dakota Fanning works great. So it's just a neat story. And whenever I see something like this, it makes me want to watch uh, Ladies and Gentlemen, Ladies and Gentlemen, The Fabulous Stains. So I always think, you know, I should watch this and then watch that, you know, that kind of thing. But, uh, the runaways was cheap. I've got some twilight time, uh, wild in the country with Elvis. These were like, I want to say these were less than 10 bucks. Um, could have been even like as little as eight bucks, but definitely look for the twilight times. Cause there's some good ones. Um, no commentary on this one. Uh, but I do like me some Elvis movies and I remember liking this one, but I, couldn't tell you what it's about, but uh, the screenplay but is by Clifford Odets, so that is uh, that is something interesting. Um, but anyway, Twilight Time Blu-rays for cheap, I can't resist, and that is why I also got to get Yanks uh, with Richard Gere and Vanessa Redgrave. I don't even know this movie really that well. It's it's directed by John Schlesinger, um, music. Oh, I thought it was somebody I knew that did the score, but I'm mistaken. Um, but this is a, it says, perhaps director John Schlesinger's most tender film, a lovely ev evocation of life on the Northern English home front during World War II. So that is sort of the time and place for Yanks. This includes an isolated music track and an audio commentary with actor Chick Venera and film historians Julie Kurgo and Nick Redman forward to that just a few more here another all of films release with jean paul belmondo david niven and eli wallach the brain le cerveau uh and um this one uh french movie obviously uh a special train has been commissioned to convey secret nato funds from paris to brussels criminals on both sides of the channel plan to hijack the train on the French side, Arthur Jean-Paul Belmondo, a resourceful small-time crook, and his pal Anatole. Uh, on the English side, the Br the Brian, I think they mean the brain, David Niven, a brilliant super criminal wanted all over the world. Uh, standing in their way is Skenapicho, uh, Eli Wallach, a gangster who wants the brain dead for more than one reason. This is the original uncut, uncut and undubbed French version of the film, the U.S. version was 15 minutes shorter and was dubbed in English. So you have the uncut French subtitled version of The Brain. Um, I don't know. It sounded interesting. I like that cast. 
There's two more here. SOS Tidal Wave. I don't know why. This is just one of those olive titles that intrigued me. Um, I think because it feels like a disaster movie. It says SOS Tidal Wave uh, is a is both a political thriller and one of the earliest examples of the disaster film. Uh, the corrupt Clifford Farrow, uh, his sights set on winning the New York City mayoral race with backing from nefarious political boss Melvin Sutter, sees the world as his, as his oyster. That's until stalwart television journalist Jeff Shannon uh, unmasks a system that would place the unscrupulous and unqualified Farrow into power uh, SOS Tidal Wave r remains true to its crime thriller roots until a very surprising twist. The devious Pharaoh and Sutter, using stock horror film footage and a tsunami-like tidal wave, try to convince an unsuspecting public that the killer wave is about to hit New York, thereby throwing voters into a War of the Worlds type panic. So that's kind of what you're getting in terms of the disaster movie side of things. So I don't know, early disaster movie, even if it's late in the sh in the show. I still wanted to check it out. I do love disaster movies a lot, and so why not, you know? And then last we have one called The Aftermath. And, um, yeah, this is, um, this is an interesting one because it is one of those that's sort of like written and directed by uh, this guy Steve Barquette. And it's sort of like a one-man show, sort of vanity project kind of thing. And I think he did a couple movies. This Steve Barquette, that's him there. Uh, the mustache guy, shirtless. Um, a spaceship returns from deep space to find the Earth in the aftermath of a nuclear and biological war. The streets are filled with muted survivor, mutated survivors feeding off the weak and a psychopath called Cutter. That's played by Sid Haig. So Sid Haig's in this movie, as you can see. Um... Uh, is raining terror down on all the others. Uh, when astronaut Newman, Steve Barquette, oh, Empire of the Dark uh, is the other one that I'm thinking of that he did, uh, confronts Cutter, violence of spectacular proportions breaks out with no less than Earth's survival in the balance. So look up Steve Barquette when you get a second. Uh, I'd rather that you discover him yourself uh, because I do think he's a really interesting auteur in some sense. Um, but anyway, this is a movie I never thought would get a Blu-ray release. I remember when I saw this was on Laserdisc, and I was kind of shocked. Um, this is remastered in 2K from its original 35mm negative. Uh, let's see here. Special effects by three-time Academy Award winning Skotak Brothers. And director's commentary. So you get to hear Steve Barquette uh, talk about this film and directing it, which uh, I very much look forward to hearing that. Um, bonus interviews with Fred Olin Ray, Stan Livingston, and composer John Morgan. Uh, plus Nightcaller, uh, an international award-winning short starring Steve Barquette, based on a Ray Bradbury story. So that one's from VCI, and that's the last of the stuff. And um, so yeah, check out more Hamilton books. You know, if you get into the groove with them, finding some classic films or some westerns or certain labels like look for Screen Factory and Olive Films and Twilight Time is definitely coming up and Arrow is coming up a little bit too. Just keep an eye out there because you might get, you know, this some crazy deal like $5 for, you know, Pray for Death or whatever. But a lot of the stuff I'm buying here is like 4 and $5. A few of them are six ninety five, seven ninety five, but I don't think I paid more than that for any of them. So um, definitely have a look yourself. And uh, I'm sure I'll have more uh, <laughs> more hauls from Hamilton Book coming in the future because it's kind of become a little addictive thing at this point because uh, they are so cheap. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching. Let me know if you bought anything recently, again, from Hamilton Book and what you picked up and uh, what else you might grab from them. Uh, please like and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys very soon. Bye-bye.